morning. Grace and peace be to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to Round Hill United Methodist Church on this second Sunday in Advent as we celebrate the love of Jesus Christ that comes at Christmas. And if you haven't been with us in the, the past week, we have started a sermon series looking at Christmas through the eyes of those who would have originally experienced Christmas. Last week we looked at Zechariah, and today we'll look at Christmas through the eyes of Joseph, Jesus' earthly father. So I'm glad that you can be with us uh, during this uh, time of celebration and joy as we count down to those days of Christmas. If you're worshiping with us online, uh, there's some ways that you can still continue to be connected with us, even though you may be uh, all over uh, the nation or wherever you may be. One of those ways is the comment section. You can write in and talk to one another. This is uh, particularly important later in the service where we lift up our joys and our concerns. You can put yours in the comments section later in that time uh, as we do prayers, and we'll share them together. We'll be able to lift up our prayers both in person uh, and uh, those who are joining us online and, and lift those prayers up as one. So that's a great uh, opportunity technology has been able to give us is the ability to lift up our prayers still together. Uh, also, there's a like and a love button that you can hit any time during the service, and it just allows you to to praise in your own way, even from home, like a amen or alleluia. And if you're here in person, feel free to do that uh, however it feels comfortable to you. If you want to do an amen, alleluia, go ahead and do it. Uh, if you are more reserved and just want to bow your head or, or do something like that, that helps you connect to God. All of it is welcomed as we uh, celebrate and worship this day. But at this time, as we continue in this anticipation of Christmas, we do so with a, a tradition that we have been doing for many years, not just at this church, but as a uh, Christian tradition, and that is the lighting of the Advent candles. Last week, we lit the candle of hope, and this week, we will light the candle of love. And so I invite those who are uh, lighting the candles and doing the readings to come forward as we prepare ourselves for this time of worship. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 10. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and the fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness, he will judge the needy. With justice, he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips, he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion and the yearling together. And the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. My name is Joseph. All was going well until I found out my bride-to-be is pregnant. Now what am I supposed to do? I can't care for this child, can I? I'm only a carpenter after all. And what will everyone else think? I want to be faithful and loving, but what does love even look like in this situation? Thank you so much. And as we continue uh, in this time of preparing our hearts, we do so also by lifting up our voices. 
And we uh, do so by singing our first hymn this morning, which is People Look East. It's on page 202 in your hymnal. It'll also be on the screen. And for those at home, you can have it on your screen as well and sing from home. But I invite you to stand as you are able and let us sing page 202, People Look East. seated. As I mentioned, our scripture reader reading is about the go- is about Joseph this morning, and we find that in the Gospel of Matthew, beginning on verse 18 and going through verse 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what has been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. At this time, children are invited for a time of children's church, and uh, Ms. Jen will be leading any children that are invi- uh, interested in heading out to children's church that will be upstairs. Uh, So if any children want to go to Children's Church, follow Ms. Jin out in the back, and it'll be a time of great learning as you learn about Joseph as well. Amen. What a joy to see. Will you join me in a time of prayer? May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all of our hearts, be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. 
So this morning, as we continue with our sermon series looking at uh, Christmas through the eyes of those who would have first experienced it, we do so by looking at Joseph, the, the heavenly father of Jesus. And what's really interesting as we look at Joseph, who seems to be this very important figure, you know, the father of Jesus, is that we actually don't know all that much about Joseph. There's not that much in the Bible about him. We know, starting from Matthew 1, Matthew 1 has this great almost Ancestry.com type family tree that goes through everything and lets us know that he is of the lineage of the great King David. But at the same time, he himself is no king. He's no noble. He's not even part of the scribes or the priestly class like we learned about Zechariah last week. Joseph is a carpenter. In the Bible, the, the Greek word that would have been used is tekton, which is different from a architekton, which is where we get the word architect from. A tekton, as Joseph was, would have not been concerned or not been in the, the business of building or, or repairing homes or buildings. Instead, he would have worked on smaller tasks around the home, doors, furniture, bed, things like that to make his keep. This is one of the few things we know about him that the Bible tells us. The other thing that we know is that at least the stories in the Bible show that he is not around for the whole story of Jesus's ministry. Whereas Mary can be found in parts of Jesus's ministry, like the wedding of Canaan and even at the cross, Joseph is last seen with Jesus when Jesus is 12 years old. And even then he's not referred to as Joseph, but just lumped together as the parents of Jesus are there. This is the last time that we see Joseph in the Bible, when Jesus is 12. Because of this, many Christians throughout the years have made different assumptions on this. One assumption is that Joseph was considerably older than Mary. The idea has, has spread through Christianity, and there's even art, and a lot of art depicts Joseph as an older man. The other idea is, because we don't see this, is the understanding or a belief that Joseph had died before Jesus really entered into his ministry. Joseph, who's such a, a key figure then, all we really have about him centers around this story of Christmas. In other words, Joseph's story is intricately tied to the Christmas story. And it begins with his engagement to Mary. Now, engagement as we would read it in the Bible is very different than our engagement as we know it today. In the Bible, engagement doesn't mean you go down to Zales and drop a few thousand dollars on a ring and then go and find the perfect place and time to, to pop the question to your loved one. That's not biblical engagement. Engagement in the Bible is a binding contract. It was a contract that was set up not only between those who were to be married, but also the families. They would have worked out a, a payment between the families, almost like a, a dowry. This was something that was legally binding already as an engagement, and the marriage would have just been consummated on the wedding day. So when J uh, Joseph hears this news that Mary is pregnant, not only is it a, a shocker to him, not only maybe it be a little heartbreaking to him, it also puts him in quite a pickle. Because Joseph is a faithful man. He wants to up here, up, uphold the laws of God. And the law says that he would not be able to marry someone who would have been seen of committing adultery. That's what it would have looked like at that time. He would not be allowed to go along with that wedding. But at the same time, he's also a very loving and compassionate man. And he wants to see the best for Mary as well. And this kind of, we can tell, tears at him until he makes this decision to, to not publicly announce his divorce, but to do it in secret. At least giving Mary a shot. If Mary was publicly announced for her divorce and then this all came out to the front, not only would she not ever be able to marry again, 
she would probably struggle to, to provide for herself, and that's at best, at worst, she could have been beaten or killed. And so he tries to give her a fighting chance, not putting her out for that public disgrace, but divorcing her quietly. At least that's what he makes his mind up to do. That is until an angel comes to Joseph. Now, I don't know if it's our same favorite friend, Gabe, that comes to him that we, we see all the time in this Christmas story, or if it's just another one of the angels. But this angel comes to Joseph in a dream. And he tells Joseph everything that has happened and explains that he is to raise this as his son, as Jesus, which means God will save. That people will call him Emmanuel, God with us. And what's remarkable about this story is that when Joseph wakes up from this dream, hearing this message, unlike Zechariah who questions and says, how is this possible? Even Mary who ponders it and questions. Zechariah, why, Ze Joseph wakes up and does exactly as the angel told him. He does exactly what the angel told him. He takes Mary to be his wife, and he becomes a faithful father to Jesus. In doing so, Joseph puts all of the risk and responsibility and liability then on himself. Now, if all of this became public, he would be implicated in it too. He would have his life ruined as well, and yet he has taken this risk for Mary, for Jesus, for God. We see the faithfulness in his life. We see that when a census comes and says that everybody has to go back to their hometown and be registered, he packs up his things, helps his pregnant wife along on this tough journey to Bethlehem. When there's no room at the end, we imagine him fighting for whatever he can for his wife who is about to deliver, and at least finding some comfort and being able to deliver in a warm stable. Even later, as Jesus is just a young child and they are at risk, he packs up everything again and finds refuge in a foreign country, in Egypt. Assumingly, leaving everything he knew behind, all of his jobs, and picking that back up in this foreign country, just trying to make ends meet for his family. Joseph's story may not be the, the most widely uh, written about story in the Bible, but it is extraordinary nonetheless. I mean, Mary is often lifted up as the, the dutiful, the, the wonderful, obedient servant, and she should be. We'll talk about her in a few weeks. But we shouldn't overlook Joseph and his faithfulness and love either. Like I said, he risked everything. Risked his whole livelihood on what God had told him. He risked it for Jesus, risked it for Mary, risked it for God. And it's amazing to think, why would he do this? Why would he make this risk and sacrifice when he had already considered and thought through a way out? And maybe it's because what the angel tells him is a, a news that is so good, a story that is so compelling that he would rather be part of it than not. That he would rather risk himself to be part of that story than to not be part of it. That the good news is so good, this, this news that will come in the form of this child that he will raise who will be called Jesus, the one who will save God's salvation the one who will be called Emmanuel, God with us, that this news is the news of everything that he has ever desired. Salvation from God and a love from God who is now with us. This was worth risking for. And this news was not just coming to the kings or the nobles, it wasn't coming to the, the learned or the super holy in the priestly class. It was coming to an average Joe like himself. And that 
was compelling. It was compelling that God's love and salvation would come for someone like him. Like him. It's this same story that has compelled Christians throughout the centuries to also take on that love and that risk to step beyond their their comfort zones and to do things that they never thought they would be able to do because they are so drawn into the love and the salvation that has been offered for them. It's how we see stories like St. Francis who, who renounces his wealth in order to go and care for the poor. It's how we see Mother Teresa risking herself of diseases and sickness to care for those in the areas around her, the most vulnerable. It's the same dream that Martin Luther King caught on to that allowed him to stand up to injustice in our country. It's this love, this passion, this salvation that is offered for us all that is so compelling that they would rather be part of it and risk than be safe and not be part of it. This morning, as we hear this story, as we hear the Joseph story, and all that it means not only to him, are we also compelled by what it means for us? Are we drawn into the story in the same way? Do we recognize that the story speaks to us in the same way that you have been offered salvation? You have been offered salvation. That God's love has come to this world for you. And that this news is so good that it's better to be part of it and risk than to not be part of it at all. To step beyond our boundaries of comfort and love than to not dive in to this good news. But sometimes we're afraid to step out of these boundaries, step out of these comfort zones, And the good news does push us past our comfort zones that we have. And the reason it does that is because we have become too comfortable with things that are not what God would desire for us. We've become too comfortable trying to save ourselves, saying that we can do it all, we can take it all on our shoulders when we cannot do it. We've we've become too comfortable with a world that is hurting and suffering And Jesus calls us past that. Jesus calls us to step out and to join into this amazing call where God has come to earth to show us love and offer salvation and to invite us to be part of it. This morning, how are you being compelled by the Christmas story? How is it speaking to you more than just a an annual sentimental feeling, but a a story that pushes you beyond your comfort zone to share the good news, to live the good news, to live that love that we light the candle for because the story itself is worth it. It's so worth it. Amen. This time, as we reflect upon these words, we can do so by singing our next hymn, which is Once in Royal David City, as we remember the lineage of Joseph and David. And this is is on page 250 in our hymnal. Uh, I invite you to stand as you are able. Again, it will be on the screen. And for those at home, you can sing from home. Uh, But let us join in Once in Royal David City, page 250.
You may be seated. At this time, we offer up our joys and concerns in a time of prayer, taking them to God. And if you are online, you can begin to send uh, those uh, prayer requests in through the comments section. And we will uh, share those in just a moment. But we'll begin with those who are here in person. Are there any joys or concerns that we would like to lift up for prayer this morning? Uh, celebrating with uh, George and Rhonda, who uh, welcomed a granddaughter this week. So that's uh, great news. Any other joys or concerns you want to lift up? Yes, I would like to ask a prayer for my children's bodies if they have some very serious operations going on. Absolutely. So uh, prayers for Elizabeth's uh, children's father as uh, he's facing a very serious uh, operation, and we pray that it goes well. Prayers for Julie and Sherry, absolutely. Oh, the worst thing, of course, I, my uh, grandchildren staying with us for a couple of days and um, had an opportunity to be prayer with my grandson and, and I was able to sleep. And he said uh, after the prayer that you implied that Jesus and God were the same thing. So I started explaining to him the Holy Trinity, and he said, oh, I get it. And I said, well, I, I don't completely, but... Uh, <laughs> Good to have conversations with uh, children and grandchildren about God and learning from them as they teach us things. That is a, a joy for sure. lift up a glory sighting of seeing a uh, family, but also having conversations about God that maybe we have not had before with our family and just hearing uh, how God is at work in them. That's, that's wonderful to hear. Any others in person we want to lift up, either as a joy or a concern? Yep. We want to continue to pray for John Ford and keep him in our prayers. Any others in person? If not, uh, we'll go to our uh, congregation who is joining us online. Uh, we want to look at those uh, prayers, prayers for Sydney Murray, who broke her foot. So we want to keep Sydney in our prayers. Uh, prayers for all the college students during exams uh, and then for their travels home. Absolutely. Uh, praying for all those who are struggling with mental health and that they may find the resources uh, that, need, that they need that provide that support. Uh, prayers for all those uh, suffering for whatever reason. Uh, may God embrace them and see them through their difficult times. Uh, the joy of being able to be together and enjoy holiday traditions. Uh, that is a joy indeed. And we have a uh, prayer for Glenda's niece's daughter, Tyler. Uh, who is experiencing acute migraines while beginning college exams, and uh, that would certainly be difficult. Uh, so we lift that uh, prayer up. Any other prayers in person or online that we'd like to lift up this morning? Absolutely. So praise for uh, Jackie Lutman's birthday coming up, and then uh, a joy of just having the children back in church, and give thanks to all those who are helping out with uh, children's church and Sunday school and putting all that together to make it a possibility. So thank you. Let's follow on over here. Um, for my best friend in the world, he's very sick. Uh, not really sure what's wrong. Absolutely. 
something. I want to lift up uh, Chris Everett's uh, best friend who is sick and not really sure why. So we pray for not only health, but for a, a diagnosis for what is, what is going on. We keep him in our prayers. Any others? If not, then let us go to the Lord in a time of prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this love in which you pour out upon us daily. The love that sometimes we do not feel worthy of, and yet you deem us to be worthy because we are the works of your hand. You have come to show that love to each and every one of us. As we have heard through the story of Joseph, and so we pray for that love and compassion and healing upon so many that we have lifted up today. For those battling cancer, heart disease, diabetes, dementia, and Alzheimer's. For those who do not know what is ailing them. For those who have lost loved ones. Lord, have your arms around them that they may experience your love your presence with them in these hard and trying times. We give you thanks for birthdays, for celebrations, for those children back in our midst here in the sanctuary. We give you thanks for all those joys. We pray that you are with those who are going through so much stress, uh, particularly at this time of year. For those college students finishing up or beginning exams, we pray for all those who do not find the, the holidays to be a, a time of, of peace or a time of, of warmth, but one that is a time of pain, reminding them of what has been lost. Help them to experience your love through those around them, even in these difficult times. And Lord, we pray for our world. We pray for all those who are suffering both here in our community and worldwide. And we pray that you may guide us through the power of your Holy Spirit to, to work to help those who are in need, that we may show your love and be your hands and feet in the world. And this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And at this time, we experience God's love around the table through Holy Communion. And as we do, I invite you to hear Christ's invitation, which is for us all, and then pray with me the prayer of confession. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and who seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole church. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. At this time, I invite us to share the peace and love of Christ with one another. If you're worshiping with us online, you can do so through the comment section of sharing love with each other. But I invite us to, to gather and to share the love of Christ by saying, peace of Christ be with you to your neighbors around you.
this time, I invite us to join together in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. And a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father, almighty creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity. You made a covenant to be our sovereign God, and you spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce the time that had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick. He fed the hungry. He ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and you made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always by the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper is over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now with the confidence of children, let us pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom power and glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ is given for you. And the blood of Christ is given for you. The table of our Lord is prepared and all are invited to come and to receive this love around the table. We have uh, two stations in which you will be able to come forward to. Uh, We invite those who are on the sides to come forward first, and then the sinners. Uh, There are gluten and gluten-free elements. The gluten-free elements are on the plate that is separate if you need them. Uh, For those worshiping with us at home, if you would like the elements brought to you, Uh, Let me know, pastor at roundhillumc.org, and we can bring uh, those elements to you or set up a way for that to happen. 
uh, as we are gathering and taking of the elements, uh, those online, you'll be seeing some of the things that happened last week here uh, with our Sunday schools and worship and uh, just enjoying uh, the music that is being played as well. But at this time, for those gathered together, I invite us to come and experience God's love through communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself up for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. In this we pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before our benediction, there are a couple of announcements uh, to make. Uh, first is that uh, there is going to be the uh, Grinchmas house decorating later today at 1 o'clock. Uh, and that is going to be a wonderful time of gathering and decorating and having fun. Uh, so that's here at 1 o'clock uh, later this afternoon. So just a reminder about that. Also, if you haven't participated yet, you're still welcome to participate in our uh, Sunday school uh, events that are happening now at 9 o'clock here. There's a, an adult uh, study and a children's study going on uh, looking at the uh the book, uh, The Grinch, and uh, also looking at Matt Rawl's book talking about uh, where we see God in this story. There's also a 7.30 meeting uh, virtually for the youth on this as well, and you can find that in your e-note. I also want to lift up, if you're looking for what's going on with our Christmas Eve services and what's happening, we will be having uh, three in-person services, two here, 7 and 9 o'clock service, and we will be having a 5 o'clock service actually outdoors at the town park. Uh, so with uh, beautiful lit up uh, trees and all of that, we'll be uh, gathering there at 5 o'clock. So 5 o'clock outside at the town park, 7 and 9 here in person. So a lot of opportunities to gather uh, with, uh, with each other and with the community here uh, for Christmas Eve. Uh, finally, just a reminder for those who are on council. 
that there is going to be a short meeting uh, right after worship uh, that you have hopefully received an email about, and we'll uh, be able to do that hopefully very quickly. Um, but just a reminder about that. If you are not able to be here in person, uh, you can read that email and send in a vote uh, via the email as well. Any other announcements that we have? Thank you so much also to those uh, seven and nine Christmas Eve services that we're going to limit the capacity in here to 80. And so there'll be a sign up out there for people to sign up. So uh, if you want to sign up quick, so I'm sure you're one of those people. Absolutely. Thank you. So there will be a, a limited capacity for the indoor services um, to try to keep it safe. It's also one of the reasons we're doing an outdoor service as well. Uh, but for the seven and nine, we will have a pre-registration um, so that we can try to keep it as uh, organized and as safe as possible as we worship. And so 7 and 9, be on the lookout for that pre-registration so that you can uh, sign up to be uh, part of that service. Thank you. So our donations, uh, we are about to do one of our uh, monthly uh, food pantry uh, deliveries uh, or uh, taking, uh, yeah, one of our uh, weekly, our monthly food pantry times is coming up. Uh, what the food pantry desperately needs is brown paper bags. Uh, so if you have those, you can drop them off in the, the box right outside. And of course, we always are looking for and appreciate any support with uh, uh, dry goods that uh, can be used uh, and given to our families in need. Any others? If not, then I invite you to go forth into the world knowing that Christ has come, Jesus has come, Emmanuel has come for you for you and for me. And that is a story and a love so compelling that it's worth risking our own selves for to step beyond our boundaries and share that love to each and every person we meet today. So go forth and name the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>